Jim Shart, and with the Stockton CCL chapter, and our chapter in February of 2015, our chapter was formed. We soon learned that we were expected to establish a relationship with Jerry McNerney, our congressional representative. I had never met him, and I'm chagrined to admit that I knew very little about his stances on anything. And so our first meeting with him the following April was for me cause for anxiety. We were thrilled and flabbergasted when Representative uh, McNerney described in some detail a bill he was working on which included the basic provisions of the CCL uh, proposals. I thought to myself, that was easy. <laughs> but I soon learned differently. So in uh, December, he uh, introduced the Consumer Rebate Act. The passion for action on the climate uh, displayed in the Consumer's Rebate Act comes from who Jerry McNerney is. Prior to serving in Congress, he worked for many years as an engineer on wind energy solutions and even formed his own startup company to manufacture wind turbines. And he has a, C a PhD in mathematics. He was elected to the House of Representatives in 2006 and his district, California District No. 9, includes parts of San Joaquin, Contra Costa, and, Sa and Sacramento counties. He sits in the House Committee on Energy and Commerce and on uh, sub subcommittees on Energy and Power, uh, Communications and Technology, uh, Environment and, uh, and Economy, and is the Subcommittee on Economic Opportunity. He also serves on the House Committee on Veterans Affairs, a great fit since he, both he and his son have served in the military. Representative McNerney has been and continues to be a vocal advocate for protecting our California Delta. And in 19, I'm sorry, 2015, he and Republican Congressman Walter Jones formed the Bipartisan Congressional Campaign Finance Reform Caucus to address the problems of the influence of money in politics. We appreciate that uh, Representative McNerney will be speaking to us today. And ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Jerry McNerney. from a, a town hall on the Affordable Care Act uh, in Martinez. And uh, I can tell you there's plenty of enthusiasm uh, for resisting that uh, overturning that they're trying to do in Washington. So there's a lot of good people around who want to get involved. And, and I told them, well, I'm going to go talk about climate change, and they erupted. So uh, there's some synergy here, too. So it's a, it's a great day for us. Um, I want to tell you, the first time I heard about climate change was in 1969. I got a few gray hairs here, but uh, I was a uh, cadet at the United States Military Academy, and then uh, our basic engineering class, they said, well, there's something called greenhouse gases, and they're being trapped in the uh, atmosphere, and uh, it's trapping heat, and sooner or later, we're going to have to deal with this. So in 1969, the United States military was aware of the threat of climate change already. And so uh, when I was, uh, was 18, I thought, well, geez, that's a long time. I'm going to worry about this for a little while. But uh, we're having to worry about it now. Um, but it's a pleasure to be here. I really appreciated uh, the Citizens Climate Lobby and the work that I've had to, uh, that I've gotten to enjoy with the members uh, of, the, uh, of the lobby. So uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure, and I really appreciate what, what the lobby does. I mean, I really appreciate uh, last year there was a fly-in. We had a a three-member panel, there was a Republican, there was myself, and a former member of Congress. Uh, it was a very good discussion. So things are happening here, of course. Uh, you'd expect them to be happening here, but they're happening all over the country. So uh, keep up the work. We really need it. Um, and uh, <clears throat> what I love is the engagement. Uh, we, uh, as was noted, we submitted the, the Citizens Rebate Act. It started with a $15. Uh, per ton uh, and increased that ten dollars per year. It also had a, a, a border adjustment uh, and also um, <clears throat> uh, a quarterly rebate. And, uh, I think I was proud of the bill. As I look at it now, I think there's things we could do to make it more appealing uh, to more of my colleagues and we're going to be trying to do that uh, and create a new bill this year to do that. So uh, we need to look at what we can get done uh, and, and what needs to be done. And as you all know, we are kind of running out of time to do what's needed. So uh, I'm determined. 
Um, we have some challenges. Uh, as you know, we just uh, got a confirmation of the new director of the Environmental Protection Agency. He's not really one of our uh, people. Um, and uh, we're going to have to find out uh, in the next coming months how we can, how we can deal with this. Uh, I, I have, I'm aware of a, uh, of a group uh, that's going to be formed uh, of high-powered attorneys that want to protect uh, scientists, climate scientists, and government scientists that may face blackballing, that may face uh, losing their jobs uh, in the next year or so. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be speaking to them uh, in March, and I want to encourage them uh, to look out for, for our scientists. Because, uh, as you may know, uh, to, to get involved in science, uh, it's not easy. You have to sort of dedicate yourself in your college years. Um, you can party a little bit now and then, but you got you got to go to those books and you got to study hard. Uh, you, you know, it, it sort of isolates you. Um, and then when you go to grad school, you see your friends going out there. They're getting business jobs. They're making money. Um, and then you get your PhD. You got to do three or four years of postdoc. You know, you're getting thirty thousand dollars a year. Your colleagues that went to college with you are making up two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. So it's a real a commitment to, to folks to go into science these days. And then even when you get uh, your postdoc, you're not assured of a, of, a, of a permanent position in a university or an industry. So um, these are folks that have dedicated their lives to science. And uh, I'm very worried about uh, what the future will bring for them. So uh, I'm going to be working together with uh, outside groups uh, to the degree that uh, it's legal. I don't want to go to jail. Uh, but um, uh, to, to protect these folks, because they're uh, they're the future, and as I said, what, what we take for granted today was based on the science of yesterday, but what people take for granted uh, in the future is going to be based on the science of today. So we need to, to encourage folks to go into science, and we need to protect the folks that do and make sure that they, uh, they, get, uh, they get the opportunity to do their science, and they get an opportunity to have uh, a life free of worry about uh, blackballing and blacklisting and so on. So um, I'm very happy uh, to be involved in that. Um, <clears throat> so how do we how do we talk about climate change? I mean, everybody has heard the facts now. Yeah, there's rising sea level. We've seen it. Some of the uh, Marianas and some of the other islands are are are, are facing flooding. Uh, there's a big piece of the West Antarctic ice shelf that looks like it's going to break off soon. Uh, we see diseases spreading into more temperate areas that were uh, typically in the, in the more tropical areas. I mean, the evidence is pretty strong. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. It, it's almost impossible to deny it. Uh, and everybody's heard these facts. Um, and, and the facts, well, 95% of, of, the, of the climate scientists and so many, a large percentage of the peer-reviewed articles are uh, are acknowledging human caused climate change, and yet that, those facts don't get to those people. They didn't, maybe it's the brainstem. We have to talk to this part. <laughs> Not this part. So, how do you talk to that part? I mean, you talk about human stories, you talk about uh, 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 American patriotism, you talk about um, what happened in, Sir, in Hurricane Sandy, you talk about the people that are being displaced. In, you talk about personal stories. I mean, that's what it takes uh, to talk to people that may not be believers. Uh, and another thing that I've learned, and I've said this before, is that uh, you don't want to you don't want to be aggressive. I mean, if you if you start pointing your finger and you start getting red and mad and all this stuff, you know, I've had this happen to me. Basically, the shutters just close. You know, you don't listen anymore. It's, uh, the conversation's over. So you need to talk to people in a reasonable, civil fashion. You got to show respect for their opinion. Uh, and, and show the human side of it. I think that's the, the best tool that we have. But the persistence uh, is also very, very important. Uh, meet, with, meet with somebody once a year, eh, maybe that'll have an effect. Meet with them twice a year more, or if you meet with them three or four times a year, then they begin to, the, the word begins to sink in. You know, uh, we're gonna, What's going to happen if we take the steps that are needed to fight? Climate change. Well, first of all, we're going to create new industries. We're going to create jobs, probably in your district. Uh, we're going to be uh, eliminating uh, 2.5 p pollutants in the atmosphere. We're going to be improving uh, 
you know, the, the, the uh, incidence of, of asthma. I mean, we're going to be doing a lot of good things, uh, but the most of those things uh, that make sense is uh, we're going to be creating jobs, we're going to be creating an economy, uh, and we're going to be out there out-competing other countries uh, that have taken up this issue. So I think those are the, those are the kind of things that we need to be uh, focusing on, and, and it, it, uh, uh, it has an effect. When somebody comes to you as a member of Congress and says, you know, if we do such and such, we'll create 500 jobs in your district. Man, 500 jobs is a gold mine. I mean, you'll do anything. Almost. We get 500 jobs in your district. So uh, I, I think um, focusing on the uh, economic part of it is probably uh, another key issue that will help a lot. Um, let's see. We're lucky to be from California. I, I can tell you. Uh, I've never been more proud than to be from this state when I see uh, the progress we've made with the, with the renewable portfolio standards, with AB 32, with the state senate, the, the, the leader of the state senate saying that he's got peoples in California's back when it comes to ACA uh, um, repeal. I mean, we're living in the state that's going to be leading the country and leading the nation. So y'all ought to be really, really proud of being a Californian and uh, I don't know. I know that AB 32 has created revenue for the state, but it hasn't hurt any consumers. Does anybody know of any consumers that it's hurt? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, and if we follow through with, uh, with the rebate part of that, it'll improve the economy. I mean, the guy out there that, that's driving an old car, you know, he'll say, you know, I'm going to take my quarterly uh, check or my monthly check and I'm going to go out and buy one of those new hybrid cars or an electric car. And that'll improve our economy. You're going to say, well, my house is kind of leaky. Maybe I can get some storm windows put in. Maybe I can get the... I mean, these are all job creators. And so we know for sure that that rebate uh, is going to uh, create economy and wealth. So we have a lot going for us in terms of where we want to go with that. Um, I don't want to forget anything important. But uh, it's important that we continue to force this issue. Um, I, I do plan on, on in, uh, introducing my new modified bill uh, probably by mid-year. Now, uh, it's important. One of the things that I really want to do is get Republican co-sponsors for my bill. And that's, uh, we have a number of Republicans that have signed on uh, last Congress and this Congress uh, onto resolutions, which really don't mean, resolutions are just a statement of a position, really, or a belief uh, that climate change is real, that it's uh, caused by humans. Uh, I think there's at least 13 Republicans that are on that now. They're not probably not quite ready today to get on to my uh, carbon tax bill, but I think if we work on them, I think there's a chance that we'll be able to get some of them on. Um, I'm not too optimistic about getting that bill passed and signed into law this next two years, uh, but I think uh, Big measures like that take time, and, and you know I know time is running out. It's hard, but um, if you if you look at uh, big measures like the Affordable Care Act or, uh, or or tax reform, I mean these things do take time to to, to mature. So uh, you put the bill out there one year, uh, you get a couple of co-sponsors, you talk about it, it gets in the news, people back home hear about it, and tell and tell you that you, that you need to be paying attention to this. Uh, and in the next Congress, I think, uh, you know, we may have a different president in two years or less. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I guess I should make those kind of predictions. But um, we almost certainly will have a, a much better ratio in the House of Representatives. Uh, and uh, we'll need to hold on to the seats we have in the Senate and maybe pick up one. So uh, I think in the next Congress, uh, between uh, 2018 and, and 2020, I think we have... Uh, or 2019 and 2020, we have uh, a realistic chance of getting something done in this issue. Now, um, the Ways and Means Committee, they're the committee that writes the tax law. Uh, they are working at, uh, on stuff that I think uh, I can use in, in my bill uh, to, to, encourage, uh, to encourage support on the Republican side. So um, one of the things that I want to insist on is that we, we keep increasing the price of carbon until we reach 
uh, our attainment of 80% reduction of carbon emissions. Uh, and that'll be our <laughs> number. Uh, so that's, that's really just what I wanted to say. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I think um, Marty mentioned I spent uh, 25 years creating wind energy technology and new, uh, new energy technology out there. Uh, it was a passion of mine that started uh, again when I was in college. Uh, the uh, old, the Arab, uh, the oil embargo that we had in the 70s made me uh, understand uh, how important energy issues were. I was a avid bike rider and breathing fumes in from cars as they passed also was a motivator. Um, but it, it wasn't until a little bit later that the climate issue really started hitting home. So uh, it's 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 come it's come around. It's maturing. Uh, you know, was, uh, even the most strident. Uh, Republicans are now acknowledging that climate change is happening. I mean, not not folks like uh, Enofrey, but um, there's uh, there's plenty of Republicans that, uh, that I know personally uh, in the House that, uh, that that understand that this is a threat. They're still a little bit afraid to go against the, the party party orthodoxy because of fear from uh, for primary uh, threats in the next election. So um, if we can figure out how to uh, lower the threat uh, of primaries on moderate Republicans that actually believe we need to do something, I think that would be probably the most important thing we can do. So I'll put on our thinking caps and, and uh, over the next uh, few months come up with ideas on how we can uh, assure moderate Republicans that supporting climate uh, um, legislation is not going to cost them their seats. Thank you.